Today on Trail Tracker, I'm going to show you that you don't need to be a youngster to learn how to jump. Now I'm 47 years old and two years ago, after 15 years of riding, I hit my first ever proper bike park features. Thanks to the perfectly built trails I started out on, I made pretty good progress in the first year. But last year I spent very little time in the bike park and by the beginning of this season I felt like I was pretty much starting all over again. This year, however, I think I've made some pretty big progress, and there are two main reasons for this. Number one, I've ridden a lot of park. They say that practice makes perfect, and there is nothing better for improving your jumping than going to lots of different places and riding lots of different features. And number two, my buddy Eve. Now, Eve has some serious skills on a bike, and because we've ridden together a lot, I've come to trust his judgement when it comes to those scary bike park features. Which means that he has been able to tow me into features that I would never have plucked up the courage or had the confidence to hit on my own. The huge steps forward i would made became massively apparent on our last bike park day of the season, when we made our first visit of the year to a park I'd ridden before. By the end of the day, I'd cleared so many new features, I was beginning to lose count. That evening, I began to wonder. Could I hit these features without a toe? There was clearly only one way to find out. So, the following week, I went back and challenged myself to hit the five biggest features all on my own. Okay, let's take a look at the first feature. It's a wooden step up with a uh, reasonable gap up to the knuckle there. I guess something like about five metre gap. And then it leads on round into this North Shore feature. Step down gap, it's not so big. I guess it's maybe two and a half, three metre gap. A nice one landing. Even following Eve, I had a bit of a commitment issue and struggled a little with the line over the blind table before the gap. Not to mention the corner after the step up. <laughs> but eventually I got it. So, let's see how I get on on my own. Okay, one down. Let's take a look at number two. It's a pretty big step up, this one. You know, the funny thing is I've never looked at it this closely. Up until now, I've just followed people and thought, well, it must work. It's got to be about nine metres, I guess, from the takeoff to the landing. The speed at which you have to hit this lip means it definitely requires a lot of commitment. Yep. Question is, do I have what it takes? Well, I guess you can't question my commitment. I oh. honestly didn't think it was possible to overjump it. Thankfully, though, I've got plenty of protection on, so I haven't hurt anything other than my pride. So, let's try it with a little less speed. Better. Okay, a little bit short that time, but rather that than too long. Hopefully, we can avoid any similar dramas on feature number three. Okay, so here's the next one. It's like a step down. It's about six meters of landing. And then afterwards, there's a step up here. And this one, I think the gap is six or seven meters. Landing. This is another high speed feature, 
and after you hit the step down, there is no way you're going to be able to stop before the gap. So, it's going to have to be another case of full commitment. Three for three, not bad. Time for number four. So, last time when I did this, I didn't actually realise how big it is. It's about six and a half foot drop and to hit the landing you're going to go one, two, three and a bit meters. Guess we're looking at three meters down as well. Now this was definitely the one that took me the longest to work up to last week and even then for some reason I pulled up on the gap jump that follows and I wasn't feeling any less nervous about it this week. Right. Not feeling it today, so it's not going to happen. I followed the first rule of jumping. If you're not feeling it, save it for another time. Okay, time to try and get some redemption on the fifth and final feature. This is the last of the new features I managed to complete last week when I was out with Eve. So. Now to drop, reasonable height. I mean, look, it's not quite as high as the other one we were looking at. To hit the landing, here's about six or seven meters. This one went really smoothly last week, so I'm feeling fairly confident. It would certainly have been amazing to leave the mountain that day with all five challenges ticked off, but I am super happy with four out of five. And next year, when the bike parks open up again, I will definitely be back for more. I would love to hear about your experiences of learning to fly, particularly if, like me, you're at the older end of the spectrum. And perhaps I might even inspire some of you to follow in my tyre tracks. As always, thanks for coming along, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.